from the deep dark reaches of Star Trek Online comes Nicodus, Tabitha, and Grebog with another episode of Fleet Action Report. Hello and welcome to Fleet Action Report, the show where we don't just play the game, we teach you how to play the game, if a little late. Uh, gather around, ye starry-eyed stiff spacefarers and digital delinquents. That was the inimitable Nicodus of our veritable virtuoso of virtual voyages. Then there is myself, the delightful, the darling, and sometimes discombobulated Tabitha. And last but never least, the illustrious Grebog, with a mind sharper than a Vulcan's love for logic and an intuition more mysterious than the dark side of the moon. Together we embark on this cosmic cruise, your intrepid trio steering the starship fleet action report through the vast void of video gaming with a promise of adventure, discovery, and, dare I say, a bit of mischief. So buckle up, space cadets. Our journey through the stars and stories of the galaxy begins now. All right. This is episode 193. Loby <laughs> recommendations. Yeah, I did not come up with anything as witty as Tabby on, on what to call this episode. Um, it is what it is. Um, we don't normally do these type of episodes, but we, we thought with the, all the lobby that they're going to be throwing at us this year, we probably should do it at least some point. So, yeah. Um, and, and as always, you can support us by, one, being here, because we appreciate all that, that show up and are here. And, and then also you could, you know, like, subscribe, follow. Um, we, we also have YouTube um, here. I think I, I even did a, you can go follow us there. Um, that's where all episodes get archived and, and are, are there for your liking to watch whenever you want. Um, and, and then there's, of course, coffee. Um, send us a cup of coffee. You don't, don't want to pay for it via Twitch um, or, or that way, and you want to support another way. Um, the nice thing about coffee is they take less of a cut. Some would say that I've had a little bit too much coffee. Uh, maybe okay hey, Nicodus well, why don't you go first uh, how's your week been and what have you been up to um I am back to doing my normal job um so this follows my injury that I had and all the light duty stuff and Monday which is why I wasn't here for fun night um I was I was put back to my normal job I I'll be honest with you guys I was really really nervous about going back to work um but once I actually got there, it's like a bicycle. Like I, I was right back into the swing of things. And today when I was at work, like we got a, a run that was a two hour drive one way. Um, so the total time for the run was about six hours. And everybody else was like, oh, we don't want to, you know, this is a long, long way to go. And we don't really want to go. And I'm like, no, let's do it. Let's go. So kind of back in the swing of things. It was fun. Um, my injury is still acting up a little bit. I noticed that with all the, the walking and standing I've been doing, um, I had some throbbing going on, I suppose, but nothing too severe, nothing I couldn't handle. So I got to watch that going forward, but it, it's nice kind of being back at my normal job. Um, outside of that, in the gaming world, I've spent, I completed the, the current event on STO um i i don't know about this this new item that we got I, my first thought was i was going to use it but once i got it and i was reading up on it i'm not really sure about it i can talk about that a little bit more here in a bit but uh the uh the other game i've been playing is final fantasy 7 rebirth um which kind of led me to being a little bit late today i apologize to our viewers to to the chat um but it's it's a fun game. I am winding down to the last section. I just finished the last side quest and uh, the last um, optional objectives that I had to complete. So from here on out, it's just storyline. Um, but that's been kind of a lot of fun to to think around on and and see how they've changed the story. Um, recommend it though if if you uh ha you know are a fan of rpgs i definitely recommend it whether you played the original game or not um and i will pass the torch on to tabby tabby how's your week been um in a word exhausting um i've been working on a v rather large video project with another 
uh, content creator through uh, one of the orgs that I work with. And uh, to the tune of like two to three, vid uh, like editing two to three videos per day, in addition to my day job. So that has been, that has drained me significantly. But it has been worth it. The project is going very well and it's been incredibly fun. Um, aside from that, um, not too much. Uh, I did my dipped my toes into the World of Warcraft Plunder Dome thing, and it's incredibly confusing. Um, we uh, Nimue and I pretty much like died like right away, and so uh, it's gonna take some getting used to. But other than that, um, STO, and that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> Tavi, the person who can who can't not schedule a hundred and fifty percent work for a single day. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, that means uh, Grebog gets the torch. Um, I, I've been playing STO. I, I've been uh, working on one of my my temporal recruit on my my free to play account. Uh, I decided to kick off some missions there, um, getting some of the rewards done there. Um, uh, which was also what we were di we did on fun night um worked on that so i just went ahead and worked a little bit more um and what else have i do um obviously you see me on a different tune tonight um that's partially because i needed a tune for 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 a uh what we're going to show off here in a little bit but uh um yeah i've been playing wow i've been playing uh sto um i have not done much with the plunder stuff because I, it's, it's not my, my, my cup of tea, I guess would be a way to put it. Um, if it was a cup not, of tea, somebody would kill you for it. it, it I mean, I, I would love to get all the collectible stuff out of it. It's just, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how much I'm willing to go push myself through all of that. Um, I, you, you know, I don't know, but, uh. And I've been taking my, my paladin now into to the. Uh, I guess he's been raiding before, but uh, he was raiding with another team. They they got the ahead of the curve and kind of are, I think, in limbo until the next tier. So. So so I might be, uh, you know, I I I, I talked to my main raid leader let, and said, hey, since he can tank too, why don't I swap a tank for a tank? And uh, that way he can try to get the legendary. But yeah, that that's that's my 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 week. Rather well, than what about to have the plumber here. What about this week in STO, Grebog? All right. So, if you didn't know, there is a new muds bundle in the game. Um, it it, it is as some people calling it the the take my money bundle. Um. Yeah, the, the the muds thing is what inspired my opening. So uh, if if you didn't if you didn't guess, it, it is called the the muds choice pack of dread, uh, through the ages. Um, they had to put that in because there is already technically another, I believe, muds choice pack of dread, but it, it's not this one. Um, the, the, what is in this bundle is, you can see on my screen here, I, I you have a bunch of ships here. You have a 23rd century Dreadnoughts token that will get you the prototype Dreadnought Cruiser, the D9 Dreadnought Battle Cruiser, the Thray Dreadnought Warbird. Now, the prototype Dreadnought Cruiser is the Atlas, which has DPRM, which is been known to be one of the top like meta consoles in game for who knows how long um it, it's still it's not considered always the best now it is still though really good i i, I mean you, you know so it, it's a good console to get a hold of if you can um and then you also get the 26th century dreadnoughts token which is where you get the universe class temporal Heavy Dreadnought Cruiser, a.k.a. the Enterprise J. Um, 
the Durgath Temporal Heavy Dreadnought Battle Cruiser, the Valkus Temporal Heavy Dreadnought Warbird. Um, yes, you get all three ships. Like same with the other token. And then the, there's the Marion Command Science Dreadnought. Those are the three. Well, I guess three choices. Th those, the two tokens and the ship th that are um, from lock boxes or promotional options. Um, then, then of course there are still the 50 keys that you can choose or two tier six ship coupons, 10 ultimate tech upgrades or, or, or two Phoenix tokens. Um, it is going to be 50% off from now until the 11th of April. Um, normal price is 29,500, which right now means that is 14,750, um, Though they said, oddly, um, apparently initially, I, I, I'm pretty sure they had it at 50, 60,000 for the full bundle, but they only have that 50,000. So that means the, the pick everything is 25,000, um, which essentially for those that don't know the math, uh, that's 20, $250 to get all, all the choices. I, um, I, I don't know that I've ever bought well no i've i've never bought the mega bundle um i know some people do um that could be good if you need more tier six ship tokens key you know th there's you know you get two phoenix prize ships um two tier six ships um the keys that you get cannot be sold on the exchange they are locked to you just to make sure you're aware of that oh that's that's good info. Yeah, um, we I, I found that out the hard way. Oof. Also, the something that is in the image, um, they don't really put it. They don't put it in the list, but they also this also comes with the account wide or the cross faction flying. Um, it is mentioned somewhere in this, but it's just they they for some reason when they broke down the list of what all comes in here did not put the cross faction. In, in that list. So, oh, up at the top. Includes cross-faction flying. Unlock is a bonus. Yeah. Huh. So we've had questions about this bundle. Um, because I, I'm like, so there's seven ships. You can get seven. Well, technically, you can get eight ships if you choose. Instead of the Mirian, you choose the two T6 ship tokens. I personally already am sitting on tier six ship tokens in my bank. So I am not going to choose that. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up right now and show you how you can get all seven of the ships, the special ships. Um, do you want to make your screen and big in your screen? Sure. Why don't we do that? I'm only doing this because we, we have I was like, I'm only doing this because we, we've had questions in, in our Discord, and I just want to make sure everyone's clear on how you can get all of the ships. And so you're 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 buying the the choice of dread pack of dread, right? The yes, choice pack I, of dread. I, I did the choice pack because I I only have the fourteen seven fifty or a little. Oh, I had over that. Um, this then gives you an item. This is where you make your three selections. I want the, the 23rd century dreadnought bundle, 26th century dreadnought bundle that get me the J and I'll take also this. Now you could, if you wanted, you know, this is where you would pick the other options. And yes, they put in here the T6 ship coupons three times, the, the Phoenix, the master keys in here three times. Like you can pick everything, uh, all these other things multiple times. If you wanted to get... I, I highly wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this as the way to get keys, but you could get 150 keys if you so really desired. Not my choice, that's not but that's your money. Way to get... I don't I, know if the math adds up to that being a good deal for 150 keys. I, I don't think so either. Um, though you could also get six Phoenix prize tokens, um, uh, ships. I mean, Again, that... That, that could be worth it. I don't know that all is up to what you want. I'm getting Given that these. you could play for years without getting a single Phoenix ship. Yeah. Um, 
Which is why I've actually heard some people will buy the Mega Bundle just because then they do get those Phoenix. Like, they'll, they'll get so many more ships. That they'll get, you know, two Phoenix and lock, you know, and also the coupons. Okay, so here I'm picking those three. It will initially give you only one of each of the tokens. So, like, if I go into the 23rd century, I can pick... Here, I'll pick the D9. It'll per give me a box. Um, but if I want to get the other ones, I just have to go back to the Muds Market. Um, and let's see, 23rd. So here's the 23rd century token again. I just have to claim it one more time, claim it a second time. And that is how you get... Oh, did I click on the... Yeah, here, so here's the prototype. That will get me the Atlas. A and then... I can then hit the get the Thray. And like... There you can see I yeah, Lord, that ship. Yeah, Lord Zex, I am right there with you. Like, if it's not account bound, if it's not account wide, I am not gonna invest uh I, like i'm not gonna bother investing in it because like i want to be able to get it on all my characters and, and as you can see I'm, I'm not picking but like here i can get the temporal so i'm now in the 26th century that gets me one of the ships and then all i have to do up here is just go back to this and pick 26th century and claim it two more times and then that I can get all all the all the ships. It's worth uh, noting that if you don't like if there's one of the the bundles of ships you don't want, like if you don't want the 26th century ships or if you don't want the Marion, there is an option to get two 100 percent off tokens. So in theory, if you leave the Marion out, you can actually get eight ships. Yes, that are or account you can... unlocks. Yeah, the, the, the T six ships. I mean, it, since it's a standard T six ship from the Zen store, it, it's account unlocked. Phoenix Prize Pack ships are still a single car captain. Um, the ships I have, like since I bought it this way, this is like uh, here we can pull it up. I now have all these ships in here. They are account wide, so this means I can get the DPRM on all my characters or, or any of the other stuff and things. The traits. Um, it, it, it opens up all of that stuff for, for all my captains. Um, I know the Marion is probably the least liked of the, the special ships in this bundle. So, and it's clearly, uh, you know, up to you whether or not you want it at all. I, I chose this because, like I said, I already have T6 ship coupons I'm sitting on and this is an account wide maybe someday i will find a captain that i really like flying a guitar pick on <laughs> so uh nigel asked a little bit ago in chat how big is the marion well here let me ready it i'm not uh-huh gonna fly it much but you know yeah and like lord zex is right they throw t6 tokens at you all the time so like if you can get a get your hands on a ship that is like otherwise you can't otherwise get. Yeah. Why not? And, and maybe if you can I, fly I, a guitar pick, fly a guitar pick. Yeah. Um, it's a decent sized ship. It, looking at all like there's a Gagarin it looks like next to me. Um, th there's all kinds of ships here. It is definitely cruiser sized, um, and I would say a, a medium to large cruiser. Now it's not a J size cruiser, but there's not many J size cruisers. Now it's a command science dreadnought too. So like, does it have a secondary deflector? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Um, I don't think the trait is great though yeah and i can't remember the console that came on this uh let 
but it, but oh, I think the hmm, the console that comes with it was it this one? I think I looked at it and thought it might be good for another special bill that I've been thinking about. So it could be useful. Which is also why I sometimes pick up some, like, oh, I may not fly this ship, but I may find a use in one of my weird builds that I do that is good. Um, and who knows, maybe someone likes to fly a guitar pick. I, I don't, I'm not going to, to poo-poo on someone's, like, if you like this style of ship, great. I, to me, it's maybe not my favorite. It's not a bad look, in my opinion. It's just not, not my favorite. It looks like a urinal. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, mean I, I don't, I don't know what it is with them designing all or nearly all of the thirty-six or thirty-second century ships to look like something you would see in a bathroom. But there you go. Wow! Oh, you guys are out here. I am. I'm right above you. I didn't know that you guys had come all the way out to. Oh, and. Then the next thing we Nicodus can show you if come on to, on DS nine. Okay, where are for you the, at? For, for the for the news. Oh yeah, that's fine. Let me let's see. Let's just go here. Where right, because okay. they started a Phoenix Prize Pack event today. This lasts until April fourth. You can go to DS nine or Drozana to get a Welcome free to Phoenix Drozana. box. Uh, during the event, uh, experimental ship upgrade tokens are also in the Phoenix store. Um, they're on the same tier, the Epic tier, I believe, with the ships. As so I mean, aren't they like more. on all tiers, just at uh, escalating value, uh, escalating costs? Oh yeah, that that is yes. correct. You are right. You got to look for the the little Ferengi sitting out here in the hallway somewhere. And you, you get a free prize pack a day. Here we go. So this is Ona. Ona will give you your Phoenix prize pack. Once so, you so have it. Of the... It doesn't look... There, there, there isn't an epic one, because that's what technically you're... Yeah. But there should be... Yeah, they're, they're in the ultra rare. It takes five of those to get the experimental te chip upgrade takes 20 of the very rares and then 100 of the rares. Um, someone went through all the math and like, should I convert them down or up to try to get to, to them? So, no, don't, don't convert. Um, if you just, if you get five rares, th that is going to be the best bang for your buck on, on getting the, the one for five or, or 20 for the one for the very rare. Yeah. I just got a um, a ship in a box. Phoenix replica small craft. Oh, uh, the, the, you Admiral always. Picard. Um, I think you technically always get one of those. Let me double check. No, it's a temporary. It's a one year one. It's not yes. the. Uh... Yeah, I got one too. Um, you'll you'll get a. While this event's going on, you, you'll get one of these Admiralty Phoenix replica one-time use little small craft. Uh, essentially, it gives you and your Admiralty ignores all event modifiers. So if you are needing to ignore event modifiers to get uh, your your completions, th this can help you out. All right. So we are ready to, let's see, we've done one of our secondary targets. All right, let me, let's do the other secondary and then we'll go on our primary. So I, I just want to take a moment here and, and talk about this little thing right here, the Universal Kit Module Tholian Technology Suite. This is the reward from the current uh, Tholian Trouble event going on. I earned this today. Um, it's got two things. It's got a passive on it that automatically summons a Tholian assault drone that will assist you during combat. So kind of like an automatic little uh, combat pet. And then it's got a charge up radiation blast clickable. Now I'm, I, I have some concerns about the clickable. 
it it says on here that it disables move and turn for six seconds during the charge up. Um, now you do get a whole bunch of uh, resistance rating to uh, re environmental and energy damage, not physical though, uh, or kinetic. Uh, and then after the charge up, so after the six second period, you deal almost 1500 radiation damage and a major knockback to up to 12 enemies that are in a 90 uh, degree cone in front of you. So it's a wide, it's kind of a wide angle cone, but six seconds is a long time in a firefight. Um, it kind of reminds me of the experimental uh, Gatlin gun that came out, I think, two years ago and the issues with that because it also had a large charge up time and people weren't using it because things were dying by the time the charge up would make it start firing and it wasn't worth it. And I kind of feel that this might be the same thing. Um, so I have concerns but I haven't actually tried to use it yet. Well, do we I want could... to run do we want to run a TFO with it? Yeah, but let's let's end? go Yeah, let's go through our stuff, the primary target first and then we can play around with it. Um speaking of, Grebog, you want to start us off? Well, actually, so our primary target is um the lobby store. We were uh taking a look at this because this is the first time at the year-end event that everybody who does the event gets 1500 lobby. So you're going to have the lobby to spend. And we kind of wanted to do a list of our personal favorite or recommended uh, lobby items. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of good weapons. There's a lot of outfits that you can use to deck out your character, tons of stuff in there. But I want to start off with, the overall picks, and I'll be completely honest with you, I thought there would be way more of these. Um, these are items in the Lobby store that all three of us decided were good. And we only came up with two. And that is the Space Trait, the Boimler effect, which is a cooldown trait. If you don't have it, um, I, I can't recommend it enough. It... Uh, has a 17.5% chance to recover the recharge time of every other bridge officer ability up to the shared category cooldowns. So it, it just refreshes when you activate a bridge officer ability, it helps cool down any others that are on that same shared cooldown. So it's, it's very nice. It's very effective. Uh, a lot of people will use this, um, as opposed to, I see your comment there, Greebog. Um, as opposed to doing the alt to backs type of build, a lot of times they'll do Boimler and maybe mix it with Photonic Officer and do that instead of taking up all the space to do a, a correct aux to bat build. So take that as you will. But that was one we recommended. The other one that all three of us put on our list was the Portable Phaser Cannon Special Issue. Uh, which is a ground weapon that uh, Katice here is using. It is this one. Um, this thing is a blast. And if, if we run a ground TFO here in a little bit, you'll see it. Like, this thing is just fabulous. All right, Grebog, or sorry, Tabby, you can go first. You're on the list first. All right, disclaimer, my picks are exclusively about aesthetics, Space Barbie, and what I consider cool. Any meta status is cool purely coincidental uh for ships um i picked the uh for ships i picked the walker class exploration cruiser because uh so i can do art for the shenjo uh kelvin timeline intel dreadnought cruiser uh because not only is uh i mean not only is it supposedly one of the better ships uh who cares about that but it's also it would also be really cool to do art with um the nx escort refix refit because like to do some uh enterprise era uh sto art uh space gear not really a lot of uh art type space barbie type things but like uh the ultimate the swarm modified swarm processor and the plasma stuff 
are all great. Plus, Boimler effect, of course, that's a shoe in. Uh, ground gear, uh, the universal kit module, strange energies infusion. Uh, that lets you, that's the one that lets you do like the freaking jump around, spin around, and do rainbow beams and everywhere. That is like so fabulous. Like, I love it. Um, I saw, I like, I first saw, it, um, I know Goofball has an outfit that's like, um, all like colors and rainbows and, uh, and like all that fun stuff and does the strange energies and it's really, really amazing. Uh, portable phaser cannon special issue as previous mentioned, uh, the type two phaser compression pistol. Uh, this would also be, uh, this is the phaser pistol that you see in Wrath of Khan. So that gives you some, uh, so if you uh, get that phaser compression pistol uh, and with the Wrath of Khan outfit, then you can do some kind of space Barbie stuff. Oh, oh, there's Katis doing the strange energies right there. That wasn't me. Uh, okay, somebody near Katis. Uh, Robert Del Seed did the strange energies. Interesting. Um, there, up oh, there he goes again. There he goes again. Yes, love it. He's a Vorta. We have a Vorta over here launching strange energies at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so costumes. All costumes. I would start with the, like, uh, uh, I would start with Starfleet and, like, Starfleet Klingon Romulan costumes and then maybe, like, grab, uh, and then, like, maybe go move on to other ones. Or just whatever, whatever floats your boat. Like, whatever aesthetically floats, floats your boat. Grab those costumes. Uh, um, he's then, just currently sporting the 32nd century uniform, which is one of those costumes. In the official color scheme, even. Oh, I, I need that. I need that. I absolutely need that. It's one of my favorite um, uniforms. I vanity Pets. The, the, the first one, there's a lot of really good ones. The first one to go with is the Melanoid Slime Worm, which is Murph. The Alliance has agreed to Everybody summon. loves Murph. you got to have a Murph. If you don't have a Murph, get a Murph. Uh, for d space devices, nothing really uh, space Barbie-ish here, uh, but uh, d just get a gambling device that replaces your triples. That's all I got. Okay, so that would pass on to me then. So for ships, uh, I have two. I put down the Zindi Primate Adaleth Dreadnought Cruiser specifically for the beam overload trait. And it's worth noting that I don't actually own this ship yet. I have never picked it up because there's a part of me that is really, really hoping it'll be thrown in a MUDS bundle um, so I can have it account wide rather than spending 900 lobby every time I want to buy one. Um, and then the NX refit uh, because it also has a useful trait and that ship is just a blast to fly. Um, let's see. Um, what is, let's see, I, I didn't have the trait memorized. I should have, and I didn't do it. It's called Preferential Targeting. While this trait is slotted, activating beam, fire at will, or cannon scatter volley will cause, and the wiki just messed up on me, will cause beam overload and cannon rapid fire to do 100% uh, additional damage for the next 30 seconds. So it effectively doubles the damage of beam overload or cannon rapid fire for or very specific circumstances. And I have seen builds where people will slot fire at will or scatter volley, even if they're not using weapons that are affected by it. They are literally just using it to activate this trait and double that beam overload damage. Um, let's see, moving right along here, space gear. Um, of course, as mentioned, the Boimler effect space trait. And then I put down the Omnidirectional Ultimate Modified Plasma Beam Array because it is currently the only set Plasma Omni in the game. So if you're doing a Plasma build, it's a must-have. 
I'm sorry, let me rephrase. If you're doing a plasma beam build, it's a must have. Uh, for ground gear, I have two. One we've talked about, the portable phaser cannon. The other one is the Kuat Milat sword, which looks like a, a ninja toe or katana, although it's more of a straight blade than what a katana would be. Um, this thing is a lot of fun as a melee weapon because it does multiple hits with the the basic slash. So like on a batleth, to do the combos, you have to move back and forth between the primary and secondary. Um, you don't have to do that with this one. You can just hit the one button. The secondary attack um, basically does a finishing move that swirls around. Well, here, I can... It does this. So it does the spinning uh, finishing move that deals quite a bit of damage. And then the combo moves, you can just sit here and click it all you want as I'm activating all my buffs as well. Because I have a spam bar that does that. All right, so costumes. Um, the ones I particularly like are the Federation uniform, 32nd century, which is what I'm wearing right now, and the Wells uniform. The, I don't have the Wells uniform, so I can't show it off. The only reason I put it on the list is because it is the only thing that we've seen in universe from the uh, 26th century as far as what a Starfleet uniform might look like. And granted, the time core seems to be a branch of Starfleet uh, as opposed to Starfleet itself. So we don't really know what a 26th century Starfleet uniform looks like. Um, for vanity pets, I mentioned Murph, the melanoid slime worm, just because he's cute and fun and comes in multiple colors. And then for the devices, the gambling device uh, I also suggested. Grebog, you are up, sir. I went different because I, I was trying to, I'm like, I, I, I knew a lot of what Nicodus was going to pick. Um, though, though it's hard to get away from the space tree, the Boimler effect, because it is hugely, it, it, it's highly recommended by pretty much everyone. It, it is kind of the meta space trait that you will always use for any build because again the main reason it, as Nicodus had pointed out earlier is it gets you away from ox to bat and allows you to have more your, your duty officers you can assign you, you don't have to have two of them for ox to bat just for that you don't have to have two, two yeah you don't have to have you, you engineering powers set up for ox to bat it, it gives you more flexibility in your builds um ground tree i put space explorer is a great gig and this is considered one of the meta ground traits um i think i picked it up on did i pick it up on this guy let's see Yes, I ha ha have a trait in here that no one wants. Um, or wait. <laughs> yes, I do. So so essentially, it is a kit, kit re performance equal to 20% of your kit, kit readiness. Um, and it also gives you kit readiness. Um, if you're doing any build that, that you are focusing all your damage coming from your, your kit, which my science captain, I, I definitely am set up that way. Um, Space Explorer is a great gig, is a great trait to, to boost that. Um, for, for Space Gear, let's see, I went out of... Or, or for consoles, there there is one that... Am I using it on this ship? I, I, I know I have it somewhere. Um, but it's called the uh, Viral Neural. Here, I'll just... Infusion circuits. Yeah, bio neural infusion circuits. It, it is a pretty good console. Um, it gives you more hull capacity, control expertise, and a nice hefty 17.5% crit severity. Now it is part of a set. However, it, it, you don't need the set. Um, the, the console by itself is, yeah, a lot of people use it for that 17.5% that crit severity. It is one of the higher crit severities that you can get on a console um 
Let's see. And then I, I put for ground, I put portable phaser cannon because, well, who doesn't like Shax cannon? I mean, come on. And it, it's amazing on how much damage it, it puts out because, yeah. Um, for ships, I went different. Um, mainly because I, I've, I've, I focused on a lot of science builds, EPG builds. And so I went with two ships that give you different uh, traits and different abilities and stuff like that. There's the Tholian Ikatami. Um, oh, what's the harm in a little friendly wave? It, it is one of the many Tholian ships. I actually have it in my thing. But uh, it, it gives you improved photonic officer, which it doesn't change the cooldown time of of because photonic officer is a cooldown reduction however improved photonic officer increases your damage of your epg um let me pull that up it, it is a great trait for an epg or a control build so i know i have there it is but it basically gives you 25 percent bonus shield healing 25% bonus exotic damage, 25% bonus hull healing. So if you're doing exotic damage, that that is a, a, a big, nice, he hefty bunch of boosts to, to Photonic Officer. Um, and, and then I put on here the Sona Intel Battle Cruiser. And this is because we recently did a torpedo build. And if you're doing a torpedo build, this has one of the best traits out there. Um, subspatial warheads, uh, as I don't have this, so I'll have to pull that trait up quick. Oh, V'ger, you are going to help save me one more time. All right. No. Subspatial warheads, um, hitting with a high yield or transport warhead spawns a... a level and it has an underlying uh subspatial tear that chases down the nearest foe while causing physical damage and a minus five to current engine it's basically to keep the enemies in one spot um and it does more physical damage which if you're doing kinetic you know torpedo builds you're boosting your kinetic damage already so this just gives you more even more and it prevents your enemies from running away or getting away from explosions so, all right, uh, what else? I mean, there are actually all kinds of other stuff. I, uh, for vanity stuff, that, that, that's all on you. What you like, what you love. I'm surprised. I, I would have recommended, I was going to recommend a, a different uh, vanity pet. Um, it, it, there is a tabby cat. That you can get in the lobby, yeah, in the lobby store. So, if you want, I mean, the spots, tabby cat is definitely worth getting after the Murph. But uh, there's there's a lot of weapons in here that I use on on various builds. I, I tend to do themed builds, but I almost always pop in here for my weapons. Um, I, I also use this T eighty eight diagnostic tool uh, kit. Uh, here on Katis, actually, I've got it decked out right there because the clicky is nice. Um, I've got the Zotvash disruptor on a character. I've got the Mako pulse rifle on a different character. I use Jayla's staff on on one of my many KDF tunes. The Emperor's sword I am using on Adam. Uh, because it reminds me of He-Man's sword. The uh, Zenkethi Retrofit Assault Cannon is a great Tetrion weapon, if you're doing that. So, I mean, and of course, there's uh, the Boolean Assault Cannon for Disruptor. There's there's all kinds of fun stuff in here. Um, I actually don't like the Boolean, but it is still widely considered to be one of the best Disruptor uh, in the game. Disruptor weapons in the game. Um... So there, there's there's the staff, uh, the anti-proton uh, herald staff that's in here. That's another one that people really like a lot. So there's there's all kinds of fun stuff in the lobby store, but 
we wanted to do our list. Anyway, let's uh, let's go kill something. Let's go show the enemies what what we're made of. Yeah, I no, even... let's go try out this uh, this new kit. Yeah, I, was like, I, yes. I even picked up the Tholian radiation devastation thing for this guy. So let me. What am I gonna replace? Let's replace my running ability for this one. We'll stick that over there. I will probably switch that back. And and I, I do like flying the Tholian Ikatami sometimes. It, it it is an interesting ship to fly. It's not a bad ship to fly. Um It I believe it also well here, I have the ship and I, I have it set up. I don't know what I named it. Oh, what's a fun one? Operation Wolf. Let's run that one. Oh. Did sure. That, did that cue you guys? Nope. All right. Let's break the team and reform. Grebog's fault. He switched characters. oh wait a minute do not accept that um i was going to we had somebody request to join us lord zex wanted to join us lord zex i need your at handle in game please uh it looks like he already put it in i oh, see it Lee in at lord zex gotcha okay let's do that Bingo. I almost forgot to invite him. Sorry about that. Anybody else want to join? Uh, Rikores, things are going well. We're getting ready to go kill some stuff. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, add you to my friends list, too. That is a wonderful idea. Let me do that as well. Gotta have Zex Marquis on my friends list. All right, let's go back in here. Operation Wolf. Oh, we have two people with hive mind. Did you guys get that cue? It is blinking. Okay. It is blinking. Let me see, Zex. Do, do you look like Zex Marquis? Nope. <laughs> nice, though. I like the beard. Wee -wee. Uh, Zex is in 10 forward. Do we want to drag him down? Yeah, that's fine. Hello there. Greetings. Hello. Oh, echo. I didn't hear an echo. He's probably here in stream. Yeah. Oh, that could be, yeah. Gotcha. Echo. With echo, the ponytail echo. too? I'm just curious. Hmm? You said that's how you look out of game. Does that include the ponytail? Yes. Very nice. I, are you named for Zex Marquis? Did I did I get the reference correct? Yes. Nice. I, I about made the joke that this is how I look in, in real life. <laughs> well, considering <laughs> I made him back when I first started playing Sniper Online. Now, now I want to make Zex. I, as a matter of fact, I might do that for our Halloween show this year. I'll have to add him onto my list. I wonder how close I could get uniform-wise. Well, I think this is a Picard uniform. No, I mean the oh. actual, like, the character from uh, Gundam. Uh, I wonder how close I could get to that uniform. 
uh, the uniform that we got from doing the Abraham Lincoln thing? Yeah, maybe. It's more frilly and colored. I'll have to look into yeah, the, uh, it. Yeah, the Emancipator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wearing the Operation top hat mini right now. Alright, here we go. Get to the consoles down in the Where security is my hall. drone? Oh, I'm not in combat yet, so there we go. <laughs> We've got uh, Shax cannons everywhere, so uh, if anybody's watching who's been contemplating picking up the portable phaser cannon, uh, here's your uh, chance to see it in action. We've got multiple people with this thing. There was a deal with Alienware not long ago where they were giving away a free Shax cannon, so I kind of just signed up for it. Yeah, that uh, I actually picked it up then as well. Not on this oh, character, boy. but on a different character. I, I had already oh, had right. it on uh, Kitty's here. Keep them in one piece. But I okay. wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna pass on a free one. Hell yeah. Right. Um, a lot of the lobby weapons that they do like to give away um, from time to time in, in a special. Here's a freebie. So so if you pay attention, you might get some of the the items we, we talked about for free. More importantly, check to see if the deal's still running, because sometimes they just don't remove them. And they yeah. can be framed after a couple of years. As long as they still have keys, that they, they sometimes they're still there floating around. All right, that was not terrible. It does good damage, but I, I, I agree with the, uh, holy crap, it takes too long. Like, here, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm sitting, oh, everything's dead, everything's dead, oh, new things came up. And I think I might have actually killed them all, but it was fortunate timing more than anything. It, it's yeah, better at melting bosses than dealing with normal troops. It... I kind of like having the little drone Custom following me around there. Keep those exocomps working. Yeah, the drone is useful. I would not put this on... If you're going to use it, don't put it on a spam bar. Bring me their heads. You're yeah. probably going to want to time it to when, when ads are coming that you know are about to trigger. Like there, I just took out an entire wave. Um. Yeah. Oh. None of our well, I guess Alpha has taken a tiny bit Almost of damage, there. but nobody Let's else has. None Watch of the other exocomps comps have. Whoever kills these terrorists will get their So like I can see in Bug back. Hunt when you know like oh hey the next wave is coming and and you could hit it then. Um, you probably could use it at least once on the the, the queen at the end. Uh, Krellian, this is not a mission. This is the the TFO. Um, uh, Operation died. Wolf. Thank you. I was going to say now I'm having That's a brain it. fart. The Operation Wolf. Not not That's to be confused with Wolf three five nine. Security teams, report to operation. I mean, not there like is a mission inside. that is very similar ish to this. But not quite. It's not the same. This is actually supposed that to be a, uh, a, holo a holodeck. We're on a holodeck training thing right now. Boy, that's a little too personal. Wrong type of training, Grebog. Uh, Someone was getting too close to, to Tabby. Deploy exocomps <laughs> at the database before the Terrans delete all the files. All right, Quinn. I, Legion, I don't have time to waste on your lackeys. Face me yourself, coward. Transporter room now. Oh boy, here we go again. There we go. Okay, I'll go to the top okay, of the stairs. Let's do this. Keep those terrorists off my back while I work my magic. Okay, here we go. Keep those exocomps intact so we can get what we came here for. 
You won't get rid of me that easy. Yeah, that six seconds is such a long time. It's it's like the damage Computer, is impressive. Initiate trend. However, I mean, I could maybe All see it being useful solo, ops. but in a Delete group the setting, the database things are just before they steal it from us. I wouldn't be against them cutting the, the damage down and reducing the cooldown to something less. Well, don't we normally get most of our damage from our kit modules anyway? Surprise! Yeah. We just use our computer. Weapons, computer so initiate like. transport. That actually depends on your build. Uh, with with Shaq's cannon, I get Data most of my damage from using that. I do primarily buffs for my kit modules to increase the damage of the cannon. You won't get rid of me that easily. Although, uh, pretty uh, this guy definitely no, everything today. comes out of his kit modules. But but I'm I also say, I, I do have the uh, V'ger beams, the V'ger probes, which are nice. I've got a, um, pl uh, I've got a, um, what is it? The plasma piercing beam rifle maxed out. It's really nice. Surprise! What was the one we got not long ago with the knockback? Data acquisition at 50%. Watch out for trouble. Transporter room, now! Where did it come out of? Uh, oh, it came out of the ball, uh, the Wolf's Reverb non bundle. Yes, that is a Polaron one. That's a nice weapon, too. I actually have that on two different characters right now. Usually, I don't do that. I try to give a different weapon to every character, but that one's kind of nice. You are swiftly becoming annoying. Hi, Quinn. Bye, Quinn. You really must think highly of yourselves if you thought you had me. Oh, I wonder how it's going to handle on the... Uh, d do the big burst on the shuttle. Yeah, Ooh. I was thinking about that. Data acquisition at 75 the shuttle moves side there. to side a lot, so we got to find a moment where it's sitting still. It's a big cone, so... I'm pretty sure our V'ger probes, the electric You won't get rid of me that find The shuttle. Uh, talking about you the, really the new one, the uh, Tholian radiation burst. I have got it equipped yet. I keep meaning to look at it. See, that's what we're trying to kind of take a look at right now. Is I, I, that's why, like, the three of us equipped it, or at least two of us I know of. Yeah, I've right? got it. Yeah, so three of us have it equipped right now. Um, I just haven't been using it in this section because I'm killing them as they come out the door. So Oops, it's not. Transporter room. Now. I tried to use it once here, and the everything was dead before it fired. So Get it back online. Okay. Data acquisition complete. Well done. Now get the hell out of there. At the first phase, it wasn't too bad because, like, I could hit them because they were they were coming out of multiple uh, it's elevators and stuff. You are swiftly I, I becoming guess. annoying. There he is. Damn it! Quinn the Tigress! Get me out of here! Okay, now we can move on to the next area. Oh, that being stuck in place is unpleasant. Yeah, and you can't turn either. It would be a little bit better if you could turn. That way you could actually keep it focused on your enemy, even if they're trying to move around you. So, so yeah, if whatever you were firing at dies and nothing walks into that path, you're done. Or, well, you did nothing. Yeah. It is why I kind of would like a, a, cut it in half. Oh, I'm not done cut, cut the cooldown yet. down. Lock phasers. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing in the cone. Keep up the pressure. You put a few dents in it, but it's still in the fight. Divert power to weapons systems at 
Oh boy, I'm gonna get hit now. Woo! You're doing this. You're actually doing this. <laughs> I, I, Amazing. I, one of the bad times to, to do it is I had missiles targeted at me. Ooh, that runs um, up in bad shape now. Keep fighting. In inconceivable. I have never faced see, see, that's one of the things like you, you end up having you if you get stuck in place, you're gonna be standing in bad a lot of times. I do like the drone. The drone is nice and it shoots fairly frequently. Does it really make up for the being locked in place though? Well, the drone is a passive, so you could throw the, um, yeah, the kit module on, and just anytime you go into combat, it automatically summons a drone. I think maybe if you keep the, uh, the charge up off of a spam bar and basically put it somewhere where you can manually control when you use it, I, maybe it won't be as bad. Oh, were you, you spam bar in it? I, I was not. Originally, I was going to because I throw everything on my spam bar. But I Ooh, oh, oh my. It's, it, that's a little too hairy to have on a spam bar. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So I, I was not. Um, I've got it set up on my number four key, which is not on my spam bar. So activating it manually. But even then, I mean, the, the no turn. I, lowering down lowering it down to two or three seconds and appropriately lowering the damage would be good or or possibly even make it so you can turn so if an enemy moves out of you know moves out of the cone you can turn it i can see so many people dying during the ball fight with that electrifying the floor and not being able to move <laughs> yeah there is that there is also another benefit we're not looking at. If you're using a kit-based build, part of this gives you a plus 100 kit performance after you do the charge-up. So, or let's, it, at least that's what it says moused over. Let me look at it. Is it a flat 100 or is it just after you use it? Except no, no, it's theory. after you use the devastation. In Where theory, are you seeing that? Beam and then hit your electro probes and watch whatever you're firing them at melt. Or maybe it's because I have something that anytime I do any ability, I get bonus kit performance after. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not seeing that. Yeah, that you must have something giving you extra k -perf. I I do, apparently. Anytime I'm using a kit that, that does, it looks like AOE. I get plus 100. Mm. It's not showing up on mine either. Environmental damage resist. Yes. Energy damage resist, but not get the kit performance. Let's see. What trait do I have? Is, oh, is that Space Explorer? Uh... Oh, I gotta put out nope. words. There we go. Back to the bank. I've been having a weird feature um, w with the game lately. Anytime I go to my traits and I'm trying to like, I used to be able to just click on something and it would take me to the trait in the list. It doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, mine stopped doing that too. Um, nope, that's not it. I don't know what trade I'm using. For what? Oh, I, I was like, if clearly I've got a trait that, that every time I, I do a kit thing, it does more, more, more oh, kit damage cool. or kit performance. So... Anyway. anyway. All right. So moving right along, um, that is going to do it for today's episode. Uh, tune in Monday night when we go through our fun night. Um, I am probably doing KDF this time. Getting more marks for the fleet. I'm sure. guessing. Unless you guys have something else you want to work on. 
Um, what are we doing next Thursday? I, I didn't have anything on our list. Uh, are we doing the proton build? I'm going to need more than a week for the character I'm putting it on. Okay. Um, are we getting a new event next um, week? Uh, we're probably going to be getting the, um, Oh, the red alert. Yeah, don't need to... Oh, first, next first week contact day should be coming. Okay. Well, if we get, if we get a new event, we'll do that outside of the red alerts. Cause we've done that a dozen times. What? What? Um, other than the, the uh, how will people know about the red alerts if we don't tell them? Oh, Let's do them how. repeatedly. Make people freaking complain that all we're running is red alerts. Yes. <laughs> oh, maybe the Zen Zenkensi one will have the fail condition removed. <laughs> and and fail it over and over and over again just to show people that you can. <laughs> Even though they said they were gonna take that out like years ago. Let's see. TFOs. We have done most of the TFOs. We actually need to do the fleet TFOs. That we're going to need to plan ahead enough that we can get enough people together because some of them require 10 people. I know. Same some of with, them require some 20. Some the competitive ones. 20? Which ones require 20? Um, the, a... the colony world takes oh. that many. Um, we are doing a build episode. Oh, shall we do the uh, let's let's do a group episodes. So let's run something with accolades for each class. Let's do that next week. Sure. We've done okay. we did that once before, um, but let's let's do that again. Just remember, we cannot do um, the Dyson Sphere, unfortunately. The first mission is still broke in the Dyson Sphere. Yup. As for another TFO that requires 20, Starbase Fleet Defense. I didn't even know that was still a thing. That, that's because no one runs it because it requires 20. <laughs> yeah, nobody runs it. And just like nobody does the competitive ones either, unless wow. it's the Endeavor. Or someone needs the competitive impulse engines. Then you're like, do you guys want to do competitive? No. Yeah, I guess that's true. You'll see people begging for, for people to queue. Yeah. In zone chat. It's like, can you let us win? Don't even know what team you're going to be on yet. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. And I again, during the endeavors, you can queue and it, it won't be too long a wait, but even then you can wait you know a handful of minutes to to pop in to get the wee woo all right guys well um that's going to do it for today as always i will see you out there as tabby goes silent have fun be safe and don't set yourselves on fire don't set the I... world on fire either i promise nothing <laughs> it's cold here. Live, live, good. live long and prosper, and we'll be right back to uh, to to raid somebody. Computer in program. <laughs>